my name is Artemis Thelus, and thanks for tuning in. Today we are back again with another pick a card reading, but one a little bit different because typically I have cards and I have a space and I have a setting and if we're being honest, I have a comfort zone and I'm trying to break out of that by giving a reading with no cards in a new space somewhere unfamiliar and seeing what I come up with. So as much as I hope this is a video for you, this is definitely a video for me. But nonetheless, or nevertheless, we do have four piles today. Here is a clip of the pile. Feel free to pause the video, meditate, figure out which one is calling your name. Remember, if it doesn't fit, it ain't shit. All right, take the parts that resonate, leave the rest behind. The timestamps will be where you know them to be. In the description bar and now in the comment section for your uh convenience so let's get into things hello pile one okay you actually are being filmed second uh how do i feel i feel as though you're used to calm waters no turbulence no splashing no you know i just got a text that's confirmation You're used to being in your comfort zone. You're using used to being in this glass jar, in this protective bubble. You're like bubble boy. Was that Jake Gyllenhaal way back in the day? Possibly. I can't really remember right now. But no, now I have to look it up for confirmation. 2-2-2 two, two, two on the clock. And that's you. You're someone who needs to be in the know. You need to have your logic confirmed. You aren't good at going with the flow, which is what I was talking about in the beginning with still waters. Let me look up this bubble boy shit so I can get it out of my brain. It is Jake Gyllenhaal. Check me out. 2001, 23 years ago, my memory. It's not top notch, but it is pretty okay. All right, so. <laughs> What was I saying? All right, yeah, you're used to still waters. You're used to calmness. And once the waves start, you know, escalating a bit, a bit, a literal smidge, you're like, <sighs> you're like in high alert mode. Okay, so at first I was only seeing the picture of the water, but now like my scope has expanded a bit and I can see you in the picture too. And you're laying on your back. You're trying to float. And if the water's perfect, you know how everything feels. The water comes up to your ears, you know, it's comfortable, you know how things are supposed to feel. But once the, the, the river starts flowing a bit, okay, once it has a current, once it makes a, a little bit waves, things start splashing around the ear, the water is sloshing in your ear, now you're uncomfortable. Now you're hesitant to, like, stay in this environment because you are not used to this weather. This is like literally someone who lives in the West Coast and is always sunny days and they are thinking about moving east, but they don't know how they would react to winter or how snow would really impact them. So instead of experiencing it or like, you know, flying out there for one week during Christmas, they're just like, no, let me not have to deal with it at all. And that's very much you. You want things how you can control them in your plastic bubble. And if things are more than that, it's like <laughs> hypochondriac activated. Um, some of you could have OCD and like, you know, have something... Honestly, it made me think of autism where you got to like Google the restaurant before you go to the location to make sure everything's where it needs to be, um, which is understandable and not what I'm talking about, just more like that's the level of... caution you take like you're very cautious you're very anxious you're very but what could but, but what could happen but what if a very much a what if person but what if this happens what if this occurs what if we get a flat what if we don't have the money what if we don't oh all of that could be prevented if we just stay home all of life could be prevented if you just stay home but it's like you still have to go out and explore i'm not telling you that you've always wanted to run and as a woman, you feel like you can't run alone at night and you really want to test yourself and get out of your bubble and go run at 10 p.m. in a bad neighborhood. Like, I'm not encouraging, promoting, or none of that. 
But I'm saying sometimes it's our fears just telling us that things are going to be really bad and they're not. You are not the only one. I'm completely the same way about certain things. I'm just like, oh, I already know I'm going to have a hard time or the music's going to be too loud or the food's not going to be that good or it's not going to participate to my dietary restrictions. So I might as well not go. I might as well not even participate. But unfortunately, we do have to go outside and explore and experiment and be in positions and places where Things aren't always going to be our way, but we do have the strength and sometimes the patience to figure it out. So like it's giving me back to the vision of being in an environment where the sounds are really loud and it's like, yeah, that sucks. But when are loud sounds acceptable? When you get to choose the music, then loud sounds aren't so bad. When are times you have dealt with loud sounds and still come out on top? When you're in the car and your mom's driving and she's in charge of the radio that day. You know, you've been in unpleasant situations. They're not ideal, but they're manageable. And once you're there, you can adapt and figure out how to come on top, come out on top within the situation. So I feel as though you I really have told myself, I'm like, it's better to show up to the function. It's better to go to the party. It's better to go to the thing. Show up. You can say you were there. And if you leave in five minutes, okay, that's fine. If you turn around and realize you don't want to be there, that is okay. If you get there and you're like, oh, this is way more overwhelming than I thought, you don't have to stay. But at least you got to the front door. At least you took that one step. At least you inched out of your comfort zone, even if it was a little bit. I feel as though trying to have the perfect situation, the ideal interaction environment will keep you on the sidelines for so long because nothing is perfect. So the best you can do is you can stock up accordingly. You can have your magic backpack with your noise canceling headphones, or your hand sanitizer and your umbrella and everything to help prepare you for the world. But it's time to escape your imagination of what the world can be and actually explore the thing. Because honestly, you only have references of environments, of people, of foods that you've already experienced. That's why you can imagine them being a certain way, having a certain outcome. But there's so much of the world that's unexplored that has you like... You're going to be feeling emotions you never felt. You're going to meet people that disgust you. You're going to meet people that inspire you. You're going to meet people that, like, you never knew you can loathe somebody so much. And you're going to find foods that you never knew you could eat so many and not get full. And just there's so much of life to be explored and to touch and feel and smell and experiment and love and enjoy and, you know all of those things so don't count yourself out just yet and if you want to be bubble boy and just be in your house forever just <sighs> like inactive i seen like a aim like a messenger sign on and you know there's like green buttons like available chat with me and red buttons like unavailable at work and then there's like that gray button that's like inactive which is like not even registering you know and if you're at that point where you're just like why even bother that's when you need to get outside more than ever that's when you need the sun on your skin because the overactive isolation has led to depression has led to what's that um uh, what's the word when you're like hyper alert hyper aware always trying to predict a problem always trying to fix something before beforehand it's a lot of beforehand taking precautionary measures and it's like you're strong enough, brave enough, confident enough, bold enough, smart enough, wise enough, honest enough to handle anything in the during stage and the after stage. Like you don't have to take precautionary measures. You can go do the thing, be in the thing, be strong enough to leave the thing, go through the thing, be strong enough to get over the thing. Like, hmm. 
I just seen 2102 on the recording time. Don't count yourself out. Don't count life out yet. It still has so much to impress you, sway you, indulge you for the better, for the good, for the best. That's what I heard. Uh, yeah, so that's what I have for you, Pi One. Thank you so much for watching. If you like the vibe, subscribe to the tribe. Otherwise, I'll see you next time. Bye. Hello, Pi Two. So I just seen 232 on the clock. I feel as though someone could be in a throuple. I feel two of the same people and one of a different people. That could mean two whites and a black, two girls and a them, two parents and a lady. Like a marriage and a mistress, a marriage and a third, but the third knows, like a poly. I don't know, but that's jumping out. What is the message that I have for you today? Pile two. Something about a circle or jumping through hoops or training for the Olympics or birth control or like the something that they put inside. Not. I, I do see the pill, but also, like, the one that they put inside. They have, like, the UV ring or... I don't know. I don't know about those things, but... <laughs> something like that is popping forth. Something about family or parents or kids or babysitters or... A nanny that travels with the family. Hmm. Hmm. I see a bouquet of roses. I see a throne. Um, I see a kite, a vacation, Greece, a beach, Ben Franklin, Please Touch Museum, Cheesesteak, Gray's Field or Mansfield or Gray's Landing, a crow, a seagull. A foggy dock, like a dock that overlooks an ocean or a beach or something. Something about sand and a body of water. I see a penguin. That's very interesting. None of the other groups went like that. All of them I had messages. And for you, I feel this chill like a constant shiver did you guys just move somewhere cold are you exploring in antarctica just moved to alaska did your heat get turned off mm, what is the message for pile two something about a partnership a roommate a relationship the partnership you have with the other parent your parent relationship with you have with your kids something about relationships partnerships reciprocity resenting certain relationships that don't give you what you need but you don't necessarily communicate your requirements okay they're telling me to tell you the story there's this book i read i think i read this in the Celestine prophecy but I could be mistaken but basically there's three types of parents or there's oh I think my sister's dog farted the air like smells I feel like that's you you got a whiff of some foul odor and that like woke you up to change you know when someone's like passed out and they give them like a whiff of ammonia or something and like it they regain consciousness or sometimes something smells so bad like you're forced to get out of that environment <laughs> i just heard someone i just seen the vision of someone sitting on the toilet playing on their phone while they're supposed to be taking a shit and they've sat there so long that their like legs have gone numb and they just haven't decided to get up uh-uh go lick your ball somewhere else you know i don't like that 
Um, and someone else comes in. It's like, you know, a, a group bathroom, multiple stalls. And someone else comes in and takes his shit. And the smell of their shit, or maybe the smell of your own shit, either way it stinks. And you're like, I'm so repulsed, I need to get out of here. The environment has to change. So yeah, there's the Celestine prophecy. It mentions that there are three types of parents, three types of people. There's the dictator parent that tries to tell you what to do. Go do this. Go clean up this. Go study your homework. No, you can't do this. No, you can't do that. Very much trying to control you. You have like no autonomy of self. Then there's the parent who's very inquisitive where it's like, where are you going? With who? Why are you going there? How long are you going to be? When are you coming back? Um... And both of those result in a kid who doesn't trust themselves or doesn't know how to, like, control their environment because they're so used to other people telling them where they should be or what they should do. And then lastly, there is the parent who is aloof and doesn't really care and isn't very mindful of the relationship or what's going on in it because it says when you have a dictator parent who tells you what to do all the time you become aloof because you are trying to escape your reality of not having control or if someone that is an inquisitive parent where are you going where are you coming back who are you going to be with how long you're going to be you also become aloof because you don't want to hear that shit it's like can you just trust that i'm going to be in a place that's okay or they even have you question things that you thought were okay about yourself are you sure you're gonna go out in that outfit with that hair are you sure do you think you maybe you want to reconsider then you're like oh i should reconsider do i look crazy you know so it's those cycle of three people you have one of those and it becomes other people other things you had an aloof parent who didn't tell you what to do often so you kind of left you lackadaisical but then the kid you might have might become a dictator because they didn't have that structure they want to make sure their kid future kid has that structure and then they go and become too demanding like it's just a cycle of those types of um traumas essentially and i feel like when it comes to your relationships you could be not just one of these three but all of these three depending who it is maybe with your kid you're kind of aloof because you want to give them more free reigns because you had a very dictator like type of parent or maybe even when you hang out with your parent you're still that you become kind of aloof because you're still trying to escape from their restriction and it's kind of like you are not who you used to be you know a lot of you are adults now or have more control now have more power now and it's time for you to when necessary use that control and when necessary ease up on that control i feel like you have to find the balance within yourself and within how you interact with other people and sometimes, you know, you don't have the courage to stick up to your parents when you go, when they visit you in your house, in your space, but you have that courage to lay foundations and boundaries with your child. So sometimes things come out a little more harsh than they should because you're actually using them as like a placeholder for the emotion you're really trying to give. That's like when someone makes you angry and you don't feel safe enough or you don't feel like you're allowed to... Uh, express that anger with the person who actually deserves it so instead you you know dish it out to your best friend or your husband or someone you feel safer with or like a stranger on the street because maybe you're not going to interact with them again there's something the way you show up in the community something is not copacetic there's it could be more more harmonious than it is right now and it's really your job to evaluate or change your perspective or get rid of some people who no longer align with you but do there you have to change the way you communicate or you show up in certain relationships in some relationships you're doing far too much and that aggressive energy is really not necessary especially with the kid like you know especially your kid kids keep their pedest their parents on pedestals for way too long so it's kind of like with the you could have love and discipline. You can have, you know, boundaries and compassion. There's some type of sweet and salty. There's some type of, you know, balance that you have to find within yourself and within the way you connect with other people. Yeah. 
but some of you also i saw this show one time it was a k-drama and this one character was an illustrator like wanted to you know illustrate for books but was also autistic and wasn't good at reading emotions and had like an emotion chart of all these different faces and it said like anger happy disappointed whatever so that they could look at the face and look at the people in their community and be like oh okay so this this is what they mean by that i also seen a poster and like smiley faces like a happy one and a sad one and a hard eye one and a crying one and all of these and again it's to point and dictate your emotions so maybe you're not good at telling expressing your emotions or picking up on other people's emotions so you don't know how you impact other people you only can reference how people impact you and if it's been poor but you ha don't know how to communicate what you need you don't want other people to be in that position so sometimes you let people get away with things they shouldn't is what i heard but uh just practice practice makes better uh be aware of when you're falling too far into one you know even if it's mid-scream even if you're like go to your room why would you oh oh i'm sounding like my mother let me reel it in i feel like relationships want the dynamic in a relationship whether platonic or romantic is to have a dynamic between two people where they agree to treat the other how they want to be treated and if you've expressed those boundaries and they're still being walked over hang out with that person less like kick them out of your life they don't need to be around and if you realize you're turning into one of those people where you're like oh if someone talks to me like this we would have a problem check yourself you know have enough sense of awareness to pull yourself like whoa this does not sound like me who does this anger belong to where did this come from how can i fix this because we should care how we make other people feel and if you don't care don't have no relationships don't have no connections but anyway this is what i have for you pile two and twos represent balance and partnerships so i found that quite interesting Anywho, this is what I have for you. Thank you so much for watching. If you like the vibe, subscribe to the tribe. Otherwise, I'll see you next time. Bye! Hello, pile three. So if we're being completely honest, I'm recording your group first. I don't know what we're going to say, but I'm open to any messages that would like to come through. Immediately, I heard Diana. Diana. Diana Duporta. No, not Duporta, but Diana for real. Um, I don't know. Hello, Diana. I see a brunette and I see an apron and I see like little doilies on the apron, on the trimming of the apron. And I see like a burnt orange mustard shirt on the bottom. It's giving like 70s vibes or 80s maybe. Maybe this is someone who passed away named Diana or they're just giving a shout out to Diana. I don't know. Someone's mom. I see. Shout out to you. Um, all right. What is the message for Pio 1? Hmm. I heard that it is time to take your mask off. You have worn it long enough and where does it really get you you are clever you probably thought you could be an actress or an actor when you were younger because of how good you are at playing a part but while you win an award for someone else's essence and the fans you meet want you to play the character or calling you in the character's name you know those actors you know them only by a certain role like you know chandler bing died but not many of you know his name is Matthew Perry. Like, some people know, oh, look, that's um, that person from Black Panther. But you don't know that their name is Chadwick Boseman or Lupita Nyong'o. Like, it's giving me the impression that I see, like, fans rushing a red carpet and they're like calling you like harry potter harry potter and you're like that's not my name 
And it's like, but that's what everyone knows you as. That's what you've taken so long to perfect and perform. But, you know, it's not within the main stage. You're not getting awarded for the manipulation, for how good you can play the part. What are, you, are you getting a gold medal for being the perfect daughter? No, you are only getting wounds and scars, medals of mercy is what I heard. Some of you should definitely look into therapy because I see a vision of someone, trigger warning, cutting themselves and that is like a, your memento, that's your medal of mercy when you needed to bleed, to remember, to breathe, something like that is what I just heard. But anyway, like I was saying, the mask, I think you did it for protection. And it just grew into a habit, a sense of familiarity. And it's kind of hard for you to break from that. You almost forget. You almost have a hard time separating you from who you pretend to be. And to sum it all up, if you succeed, you get to play the role of the perfect daughter. You get to play the role of the perfect partner. You convince somebody to love you, right? When you get to the point where you're tired of playing this role and you want to switch up, when you're feeling empty, when you're feeling resentful, and you turn to who you thought would be your people your boyfriend your best friend and the comfort isn't there it's because they don't love you they love your mask they love the role you play you they love the way you make them feel you could boost up their ego you could look really good on their arm there's something you've done all of this to please them you thought playing a role would help them love you more. Like, you feel like you have to do things to be loved. And some of you can play a role forever. It's making me think of this movie where this lady was black, but she was really light-skinned, so she was able to pass as white um, at the time of, like, segregation and things like that. So it's kind of like, you could get what you want. You can pass for acceptable but when does authenticity start creeping up and start knocking in the walls of your mind like hey i'm in here when do you feel trapped some of you already feel that and it's very much time to please yourself very much time to be authentic so there, therefore, you'll know the people who are drawn to you is because they really love you. They really see you. And even if they don't see, at least you see. At least you can look in the mirror and you're not like, whose face is that? That used to happen to me. When I was still a girl, I would look in the mirror and be like, I see half my mom and I see half my dad and nowhere do I see my own face. Do I see my own identity? Like, yeah, sure. I would look in the mirror and be like, sure, she's pretty. She's beautiful. But I don't, I'm not attracted to her. Like, you know what I mean? Some of you, I feel the same way. Like, you, you're in a relationship and you want your partner to validate your gender or validate your position in the world. But inside, you want to be something else or you want to date a different kind of person. And it's like, will I always feel lack or will I ever feel fulfilled? And it's like you will if you allow yourself to be who you want to be. You want love so bad from other people, you need to first start to love yourself. You sign your own permission slip. You validate your own book. And I feel like some things that you want, people have told you wanting those things is wrong. Being non-binary is wrong. There's only two genders. You have to pick one. It's confusing. 
liking boys is wrong. You're supposed to like girls. It's confusing. They meant to say is having the freedom to do what you want is confusing to them because then they don't know where they stand when they don't have power over you. When society can't... I see like cows lining up for the slaughter. Not for the slaughter, but like... I see cowboys running across land to like tame the mules like to get them all into the fence and when there's like a wild and it could be a mules bison stallions whatever and when there's a wild horse that's when they're scared the people who can't be broken are what bring fear to the people who are looking to control you because then they don't have that sense of power anymore. So it's kind of like take your power back. Show up in the world in a way where you feel free. But this is what I have for you. I just seen 10 11 on the recording time. Uh, thank you so much for watching. Pile one, if it resonated with you, be sure to comment down below. Let me know if you like the vibe. Subscribe to the tribe. Otherwise, you can do anything you set your mind to. And don't be afraid to disappoint other people. You've done enough with disappointing yourself. It's time to chase your pleasures. Okay, that's enough. I'm done. Uh, bye. <laughs> Pile four. Hello. How do you do? How's it going? formalities i see you shaking someone's hand eagerly i think you're gonna get an opportunity to meet someone through your connections your community networking they're like oh i have a friend of a friend who works there let me know if you're really serious about applying i'll you know call it in or something and you meeting the people and i see you like thank you i appreciate for you making time for me I i'm so excited um I see somebody in khaki pants that are kind of high water with a brown belt and a collared shirt. Don't wear that. You look like a fucking dickhead dweeb that is trying to be in this position due to nepotism. And then the people you're interviewing with don't actually like that energy at all. Like, it, uh, okay, I get the vision you're in this board room and there's old, this older man kind of looks like Alfred batman's little sidekick and there's this older brunette lady who looks like sarah palin mixed with the girl from parks and rec amy poehler all right and they own like country clubs and have like high standing in the community they make donations you know something like that a well-respected organization and based on their clientele you assume that they are like stuck up assholes or something or like trust fund baby descendants and stuff like that so you dress in a way you think you would be best received and you're like oh well the people who dress who go here look like this so i'm gonna look like this because you think you're doing it to help fit into the culture of the work environment or something like that or like you know i heard out of respect you wouldn't meet somebody wearing a dashiki you know there's some there's like certain levels you don't want to cross it's kind of like slow your roll if that's not your naturalness don't do it you wouldn't meet somebody's family and you're like let me put a kimono on because out of respect for the culture like that i feel like out of respect you wouldn't appropriate and i'm not saying fucking boat shoes and collared shirts are culture but I see like frat boys and it's giving the summer I turned pretty where belly went on vacation like you know and anyway you trying to force yourself to be what you think these people want you to be they can easily see that you are not it and don't want nothing to do with you if you try such desperation so like don't first impressions are everything don't do that but 
Yes, I feel like you will have an opportunity. I just seen a sewing machine. An opportunity to create based on your aesthetic, your artistic eye, something of the sort. That's why when you walk in the door, if you look like what you think they want, they look at you like, I want it different. I want it unexpected. I wanted something new. And it's kind of like you can't pick who your customer is. You can't pick who makes you successful. So it's kind of like those board members, they can't pick that these snobs come into their, you know, location or whatever. They can just open their doors, open their arms and present a product, a service, a situation. So it's kind of like don't hold assumptions against them about that. So basically, Pile 4, what I'm getting for you is you're going to be presented with an opportunity and you should show up for that new investment as your most authentic self and not what you think will be acceptable based on the assumption of what you think other people want from you. And it doesn't even have to be a business opportunity or like a career opportunity. It could be something on a lower level. I'm also getting the impression where, again, say you look at someone in a business outfit or you look at someone dripped in Givenchy and you just assume things about them. You assume because they have money, they have no sense of values. You assume because they have a decent job or they dress well, that they have no compassion for others. Like there's something that you're making assumptions about these people and you assume because you're making assumptions about them, they're also making assumptions about you. And it's kind of like they're more open-minded than you think give people more credit assume more people come from where you're coming from assume more people are on your side or open to what you have to offer it's kind of like you wouldn't have this opportunity things wouldn't have lined up this way if they weren't meant for you And even if they are not meant for you in the long run, like you don't get the position, you don't get the job, whatever the case may be, you showing up that way, you're one step closer to true freedom is what I'm hearing. Say you're someone who always has like your weave laid, your hair straight, and you're like, I'm going to work, I can't wear my hair natural. I'm going to this party, I can't look. Um... I can't look nothing short of presentable. Maybe you were raised to think you have to wear earrings and your hair had to be brushed this certain way and this, that, and the third. And then you show up to prom or you show up to the event or the opportunity in your natural hair. You show up there like this and you're like, okay, I'm here for the position. I'm here for the blind date, whatever the case may be. And if it was other people, they would have been like, put your scarf back on, like, Put your hood on, cover up, be this way, be this expectation. And you are like, no, I'm going to show up as me, as my authentic self. This is what my hair looks like most of the time. Every day I want to show up to work as me, as my personality, as my expression is what I heard. And you honoring yourself enough to do that. Yeah. Yeah. So I just seen 42 42 on the recording time. This is what I have for you, Pile 4. Thank you so much for watching. If it resonated with you, be sure to comment down below and let me know if you like the vibe. Subscribe to the tribe. Otherwise, I'll see you next time. Bye.